The following is a production of Florida State University's Office of University Communications. Coming up on FSU Headlines, Florida State University President John Thrasher delivers his State of the University address. Join us for a parade of some of FSU's latest tech research and startup gadgets. And from the field to the pitch to the court, FSU is on the ball. Stay tuned for these stories and much, much more. FSU Headlines starts now. Hello and welcome to another edition of FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. We're joining you today from the beautiful William Johnston Building here on FSU's campus. Like the President of the United States reports on the State of the Union, university presidents review accomplishments and outline goals for the future in the State of the University Address. FSU President John Thrasher made his first State of the University Address during a meeting of the Faculty Senate. We're very excited uh, about being able to, the Faculty Senate, to be able to host uh, the President's Address. So without further ado, uh, President Thrasher. Before President Thrasher reviewed Florida State University's accomplishments during the last 12 months and outlined how FSU will advance in its path to continue achieving its goals, he directed his attention to the FSU day. family. I have such an appreciation for the work that you do. Not only are you shaping the intellectual lives of our students, you're preparing them for a very, very complex world. I've been thinking a lot about that lately, as probably some of you have about the role of universities in that context. It used to be that uh, people thought universities were somehow protected from the real world. We know that's no longer true, and I'm not sure it was ever true. President Thrasher spoke about ago, global impacts and how the events the like the terrorist attacks, attacks in Paris in early November, no students, the racial uh, tensions across the country and college campuses, as well as the increasing prominence of gun violence, impact Florida State University. You, our faculty and staff, ensured that our students were cared for and the university bravely carried on. The shooting at Strozier was certainly the biggest or one of the biggest challenges I, I think I've had in my first year in office, but together I believe we've accomplished a great deal. Turning his attention to the current state of FSU, President Thrasher addressed the accomplishments from the past year to include prominent rankings among various sources. Our retention rate is 93%. That's the retention rate from the first year to the second year. That's an amazing statistic. Our overall six-year graduation rate is 79%. That's second in the SUS. Addressing salary compression and the market inequities of faculty pay. In my view, you've distinguished yourselves in many disciplines, and you have gained the high regard of your peers around the world. Your pay needed to reflect that preeminence. Strategic investments said, in expanding research. In addition to teaching, service, and other academic responsibilities, you've actively competing, you're actively competing for outside grants to support the work of this great university. More than $200 million last year in research funding from federal, state, and other resources. And raising Love funds for FSU's university. capital campaign. Everyone I meet is excited about, the, uh, about their ability to make a difference in this university. I'm pleased to tell you that we've raised well more than $100 million in the past year. President Thrasher also recognized several groups of students who are prime examples of how students succeed when the university succeeds. The additional funding allowed us to admit 100 more uh, freshmen, uh, first-generation college students this past summer for a record of now 400 new care students this year, also producing good citizens who care about making the world a better place. Jason and Mitch are two uh, entrepreneurship majors who started a business as part of their sophomore year experience. But they didn't just want to make money. They wanted to give something back to the community. But he wasn't shy in reminding the audience that while the university is making great strides, there is still work to be done. In September, the U.S. News and World Report uh, ranked Florida State University 43rd among public universities. That's pretty good, it's pretty good, but not good enough. We've made strides in improving the diversity of our student body, as well as our faculty, our staff, our administration, but it's certainly, certainly clear we have more work to do. In particular, we need to continue to make sure that our peer institutions across the country, as well as high school guidance counselors, know how good we really are. We're addressing this issue uh, 
obviously, in, in a number of different ways. As you know, FSU is already recognized as a preeminent university for meeting 12 rigorous standards of excellence. That means the legislature supplements the, the university's annual budget with $25 million in preeminence funding. We're asking for an additional $10 million to allow us to stay nationally competitive in the efforts to hire top faculty and move into the nation's top 25 universities. I've done my research. I've talked to law enforcement officials, including our certainly our own police department, other university presidents, and members of the state university system, and certainly my own board. They are 100% in agreement that more guns on college campuses does not make us safer. I appreciate your support and your continuing opposition to that legislation. So the future of the state of the Let university, as President Thrasher states, forward, is poised for a transformative 2016. Path. How do I know that? Well, as President Lincoln said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. I believe we're on the threshold, frankly, of a new era. We all have a role to play in this as this university continues to reach even higher. And I simply wanted to come here today and thank you for your efforts. God bless you. A week before his address, President Thrasher also announced the selection of Dr. Sally McRory as the university's provost and executive vice president for academic affairs after an exhaustive year-long national search. She's obviously distinguished herself for over 21 years at Florida State University as a dean, as a, a, a high-level administrator, and as, as the interim provost on two different occasions. And uh, I've had the privilege of working with her the last year on that basis. And uh, she knew that it was going to be a competitive search, and uh, there were no uh, guarantees. Well, I feel great about this. I'm so very, very excited. I'm able to bring a lot of uh, insight into putting together groups of people to work on some of the problems we face and to get some of our big initiatives going. Uh, I think that stability and um, continuity is a great strength and I think that because of that, uh, President Thrasher and I are gonna be a very good team moving forward. McRory served as interim provost since December of 2014. And the end of another term means Florida State inducts another class of Garnet and Gold Scholars. Nora, the Garnet and Gold Scholar Society recognizes some of the university's most well-rounded students. I'm Myrna Hoover, director of the FSU Career Center, and it's my pleasure on behalf of the Career Center and Florida State University to welcome you to the fall 2015 Garnet and Gold Scholar Society induction ceremony founded just five years ago as a way to engage students in activities and endeavors within and beyond the classroom. The Garnet and Gold Society continues to recognize student achievement in five areas unique to Florida State. Students participate in international experience, internship, leadership, research, and service in addition to excelling academically. This fall, 38 more students join the ranks of Garnet and Gold Scholars in a special ceremony at the FSU Alumni Center. Inductees receive a medallion symbolizing their accomplishments during their time at Florida State and proudly wear those medallions again at the fall commencement ceremony. I feel like I'm taking away um, character, skill. Um, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of who I am, what I've accomplished in the university that's helped me to get to that level. But once you actually sit down and you write what you did at school, it really brings it home as much a graduate, like what I've done here since a, uh, a freshman. I've been able to see my growth um, in all of those areas that I did, and it's just an awesome experience. To learn more about the Garnet and Gold Scholar Society, visit garnetandgoldscholar.fsu.edu. World-renowned computational scientist and mathematician Max Gunsberger of FSU's College of Arts and Sciences is this year's Robert O. Lawton Distinguished Professor. It's the highest honor given by the university faculty to one of its own. Well, I'm a computational mathematician, uh, which is part of computational science, which is, which is the task of developing new tools uh, to solve problems on computers. Oh, but he has a good As opposed to using experiments or theory to solve science and engineering problems, you can also now more and more solve them on computers using computer simulations. So we're about developing new methods that people can use to solve 
science and engineering problems in the Go computers, the and we ourselves also, <laughs> and you know myself included, solve pro you know specific problems as well, not just develop the methods, but actually work on specific problems too. I mean, he's a he's a world-renowned computational scientist. I mean, everybody everybody that knows that in that field knows Max Gunsberger. So I mean, he's. He's well known not only not only at this university but around the world, and so for him to be chosen, uh, frankly, in this particular field is not a, not a surprise. He's uh, he's that kind has that kind of stature in his field, and I think his uh, peers felt it was a it was a timely honor for him and the work that he had done in that field. Well, I, I can tell you that if people if people ask me what is my proudest achievement in, in, as, as a re researcher and professor in my career, and it is my it is my students. I've been very lucky to have very good students, and many of them have gone on to have excellent careers themselves. Most of them have, in fact. And that's what I'm proud of, that I've done a little bit to help other people, you know, do, do the kind of, who are interested in the same kind of things I'm interested in, achieve as well. You know, to be chosen by your peers, particularly with the number of world-class scientists and professors and faculty members that we have, out of that group is truly an honor and a, and a distinguished uh, person only gets that if they if it's scholarly work, uh, their work with faculty, their work with students. Uh, it, it, it takes somebody who really is outstanding to get it. That makes it especially rewarding that it's a recognition from your peers, from the people who are sitting at desks or in labs, you know, doing research. Those are the people who decide who gets the law. So that's been very satisfying and it makes it especially satisfying you know, award to get. Gunsberger is also a commencement speaker for the fall 2015 ceremonies. Well, each year the faculty also presents awards to recognize university friends and supporters. And this year the faculty honors three individuals who embody the university's ideals of strength, skill, and character. During its annual Torch Awards, the FSU faculty present awards to three people who have made significant contributions to the Florida State University. Each of this year's three recipients receive a garnet plaque symbolizing a component of FSU's three-part motto, Vires Artes Mores, or Strength, Skill, and Character. Harold Knowles receives the Torch Award for many accomplishments, including his dedicated service as a trustee of FSU. Charles Earhart earned a Torch Award for his many years as a prominent law professor at Florida State. And Anne Rowe took home the Torch Award for her continuous support of the university and advocate for its faculty, even after she retired in 2011. Coming up on FSU Headlines, Florida State University teams up with Tallahassee's fellow higher education institutions. It's a chance to pull together all the folks that are entrepreneurial, that are developing, inventing new things, um, new things to help basically better the human condition. In order to showcase their local innovation with a worldwide impact. I will forever bleed garnet and gold, and I will forever be here at heart. Florida State is monumental in my academic and professional career, I think. The professors are some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. We've always known if we wanted to go to Florida State, we're going to go to Florida State. FSU helped me so much by giving me all the resources that I could need to succeed. An amazing experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. When you buy a Florida State University license plate, you're not just showing your school spirit. You're supporting students like us. In the lab. In the classroom. And in the library. Putting this tag on your vehicle helps Florida State students achieve their dreams. So show your pride. Purchase an FSU license plate today. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. Florida State University joined forces with Florida A&M as well as Tallahassee Community College to showcase research and innovations that are catching the eye of some big name companies. Researchers and students from the three institutions give live tech demonstrations and presentations. We call it Discovery on Parade. Do you know where you can find robots, new cancer treatments, wine tasting, and artistic masterpieces all in one place? 
at the Discovery on Parade. It's a chance to pull together all the folks that are entrepreneurial, that are developing, inventing new things, um, new things to help basically better the human condition. Florida State University teams up with Florida A&M and Tallahassee Community College to present the community with this unique event. Discovery on Parade showcases more than 80 exhibits where researchers provide a unique preview of new and existing discoveries, inventions, and innovations. They can bounce ideas off of each other. They can learn from what each other is doing. It's also an opportunity to show folks in Tallahassee all the exciting things that are going on. And finally, it's a chance for those that might want to participate, maybe invest in the technology, maybe provide some business acumen that they can get involved as well too. Along with the sampling of new inventions and innovations, Discovery on Parade offers live technology demonstrations, video presentations about the research and workforce development, as well as featuring information on new and existing companies. One of Florida State's biochemical engineering researchers, Robert Wendell, presents green plasma technologies. He is commercializing a prototype plasma reactor system, which can efficiently produce nitrate and hydrogen peroxide in concentrations perfectly suitable for agriculture use. Right here we have our large scale uh, prototype, which is something that can be put in a greenhouse. And over here we have a small hand sprayer unit, which we hope to give to local farmers to do some product development and testing. FSU's Department of Interior Design, Studio D, is also on hand to showcase their work. The Design and Fabrication Lab is an extension of the Woodshop Studio, which houses digital fabrication equipment, such as an epilogue laser cutter and a MakerBot additive 3D printer. So Studio D is all about um, kind of the design process and how the design process actually influences the design, how the two interplay, and I think that in, in the end, you have much better designs as a result of it. The designs produced by Studio D brought in a large crowd that was very excited and inspired by the works being showcased. Really cool. We've had um, a lot of people come up and talk to us that are really excited about the work we're doing. Um, and it's always great to get positive feedback like that and see that um, the work that we're doing is actually something that people are going to value um, and support. Discovery on Parade promotes a spirit of innovation. If you want to discover more about research at Florida State University, visit research.fsu.edu. Reporting for FSU Headlines, I'm Alexia Gonzalez. Most of us can't even imagine completing an Ironman competition, let alone participating in such a race. But there are athletes that complete distances at least twice those in what's known as ultra endurance races. Two, one. An Ultraman race spans three days, starting with a 6.2 mile swim, accompanied by a 90 mile bike ride on day one, followed by a 172 mile bike ride the second day, then rounded out with a 52.4 mile run. That's a big undertaking, both physically as well as mentally, for even the most skilled and well trained athlete. Assistant Professor of Exercise Science and Sports Nutrition Mike Ormsby and a team of student researchers have spent the last eight months studying and testing samples and data collected from 18 competitors during the 2015 Ultraman Florida race. The data from the participants showed there can be a large reduction of body fat, but can also cause temporary muscle damage as well as a reduction in insulin sensitivity. The resistance to insulin is the same pathology of type 2 diabetes, but was only a temporary effect for the participants. The results of the study raises questions for the future of endurance athletes if they regularly participate and train for such intense events, but will also be useful in better preparation during training and competing. We want to just spread awareness for what's being done and then start to look at how do we provide strategies to improve recovery, maybe get them back faster or try to have them complete something like this long race without having as much muscle wasting, as much overall inflammation or negative effects. The fact that we were able to do field work with these athletes and find out exactly what happens on the course, when they're swimming, when they're biking, when they're running, and in particular with Chris with the continuous glucose monitoring that we did, um, to be able to see how it's changing every five minutes was, was really invaluable and, and really fun too. <laughs> Reading a doctoral thesis out loud would take hours. 
Florida State University's annual three minute thesis competition gives students three minutes. Dennis, 10 Florida State doctoral students presented years of their hard work and research in three minutes or less. This problem in football has raised a very important question. A PhD student from the College of Engineering tackled a serious problem concerning football helmets and concussions. Anakit Ingroli was crowned first place in this year's competition as his research topic described how to build bio-inspired structures for customized manufacture of safer helmets. Graduate school dean Nancy Marcus shares how this was a great opportunity for doctoral students as they prepare to share their work with the public. A lot of students give presentations at professional meetings where they're talking to their peers and in technical language and using a lot of jargon. But more and more today, students, faculty, we're all being asked to really explain the value and the importance of our research uh, to a much wider audience. And this is an opportunity to recognize students for excellence in effectively communicating what they're working on uh, to a diverse audience. This competition helped me a lot where I can explain my topic, research topic to the general audience where they can understand what is the main problem and how we can solve it. Ingrole will receive a $500 prize for winning the competition and have the chance to compete against winners from other universities in a regional round of the competition later this academic year. Well, coming up next on FSU Headlines, Seminole Soccer kicks it up a notch looking for back-to-back -back national titles. We'll show you how Florida State fared in the Women's College Cup when FSU Headlines continues in a moment. Welcome back to FSU Headlines. I'm Dennis Schnitker. And I'm Nora Bertolet. The Florida State University soccer team made history again this year. That's right, Nora. The Seminoles made their way to a fifth consecutive college cup, looking to defend their national title from a year ago. But they had some pretty tough competition up in North Carolina. FSU Headlines reporter Mark Vaughn joins us now with more. Mark? Hey, Dennis and Nora. The Florida State University women's soccer team has been one of the best in the country over the last few years, and they head into the Women's College Cup with high expectations. The Seminole soccer team taking on the Duke Blue Devils in the semifinals of the College Cup. The Knowles with some great defense to start, but a run leads to a shot on goal and the first score of the game for the Duke Blue Devils. Knowles down a bit and Duke playing keep away for much of the match, until another score by Duke puts FSU in dire straits and really needing something to fall their way. Unfortunately for FSU, it's not to be. The season ends with a 2-0 loss to Duke. Although the team made it to their fifth straight college cup, there will be no back-to-back -back titles this year. There's a lot to look forward to, though, as the team returns some key players for the 2016 season. Okay, on to the football field and the bowl game matchup for the Seminoles, sending them to Atlanta for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. The Seminoles will take on Houston for their bowl game, and it's the final game of the 2015 campaign. FSU had just two losses on the season to Georgia Tech and to Clemson, so a good year and an outstanding four years for this group of seniors. The Knowles ranked number nine in the college football playoff heading into this Peach Bowl matchup and looking to move to 11-2 for the year. This is the fourth straight season that FSU will have played in either a bowl championship series or New Year's Six Bowl. Last but certainly not least, it's another season coming to a close for the Seminoles as the volleyball team loses in the second round of the NCAA tournament to rival Florida. Nicole Walsh finished with 19 kills and 14 digs as she notched her eighth double-digit kill performance in the NCAA tournament in her career, but it was a rally deep in the third set that shifted the momentum as the 16th ranked Florida Gators came away with the win. The Knowles do end the year with an impressive record of 25 and eight. And remember, you can always keep up to date with Seminole Athletics by visiting Seminoles.com. That's gonna do it for sports. Let's send things back to you. Thanks for that update, Mark. Well, homecoming is a tradition where universities welcome back alumni with special events, entertainment, and of course, 
football. FSU is no exception and continues its impressive resume of big name performers with Zach Brown Band and Amy Schumer providing music and laughs during this year's celebration. But one of the most anticipated events on campus each year is the homecoming parade, which had a few special guests of its own this year. Take a look. Our school has some of the best tradition out of any school in the country. All the kids love going here. The teachers are awesome. The campus is beautiful. Everybody loves this school. And the fact that we get up every day and go to class and just look at each other and say, you're Seminoles, that's family to me. Tribe of Florida's band of Seminole Warrior Riders joined Osceola and Renegade in leading this year's homecoming parade. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of FSU Headlines, but you can see more news from Florida State University anytime at Florida State 24-7. It's the official news website of Florida State University, and you can find it at news.fsu.edu. On behalf of Nora and everyone else here at Florida State University, I'm Dennis Schnitker. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.